welcome to the Maker's Workshop, episode one. Everything starts somewhere. And what we are going to be doing today is awesome. We are going to take one of the two printers that are here on my desktop. There's one here on the workbench, which is the Lulzbot. And we have a Creality CR10S over there. And that's what we're going to be working with today. We're going to take that CR10S and turn it into a CR10S Plus or Pro and a lot of features to this printer. So uh, let's take a look at that. Uh, let's see. Um, mm, 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 mm. There we go. Uh, Maestro, some special effects, please. There we go. So this is a CR10S printer. It's got a control box on the side. It has a Bowden remote cable to push the filament into the hot end. It uses a fairly stock hot end. It doesn't have automatic leveling by default. There's just, for a $299 printer, there's so much more that it could be, and it doesn't cost a lot to get there. So what we're going to do is, with the help of some online open source designs, we're going to take this printer and take it from merely OK and turn it into awesome. So what are we going to do to do this? Well, first off, uh, we're going to take that Bowden remote drive, and uh, we're going to change it over to a direct drive. So we're going to move the stepper motor and make it direct drive. Uh, it looks like that. This is going to improve our print quality tremendously using one of these kits. Now, this, these kits are available on Amazon.com. Very, you know, just amazing, inexpensive way to get a huge increase in print quality. Retractions work. You're able to get precise control of the filament. It's a big deal. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to replace the heated bed. So, uh, wiggly, wiggly, wiggly. There we go. So the a normal heated bed for the CR10S is a 12 volt heating pad. It takes forever to get hot. It gets cold very fast. And it, honestly, it's the number one thing you can do other than direct drive to massively improve both the quality of your prints and getting your prints to stick down, especially if you're using materials like ABS, hips that uh, shrink under, you know, when they get cold, if they, have, if they don't have thermal stability for, for their size. So we are going to upgrade that to a Kinovo 120 volt heated bed. And we're going to be able to do that using a relay, which we'll talk about the science about that relay as we do the upgrade. Third, we're going to move the filament spool from the side of the control box, which looks something like that. And we're going to push it to the top of the printer. In fact, Eventually, we're going to move the spool completely off the printer and make it wall mounted. So we're going to move the filament detector to the top of the printer, and that way we'll have a much cleaner filament path from the top of the machine to the bottom. And for the final bits of this upgrade, which will make it just that much better, we are going to add a Raspberry Pi. Poof, there we go. This is a Raspberry Pi 3B+. Uh, inexpensive, $35, and we're going to be running Octopi. No, 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 wrong, wrong octopus. Switch, switch it. D different octopus, Come on, different octopus. Octopi. Octoprint. There we go. So we're going to be running Octopi. Uh, we're going to be getting rid of that box. We're going to make it a lot quieter by putting some fans, you know, that are really quiet, like Noctua fans from the gaming industry. And we're going to be changing the firmware and adding auto leveling through. Diggity, diggity, diggity. Here we go. A BL Touch auto leveling sensor. So this should be a pretty fun build. All right. Well, let's put this back to being a piece of paper. There we go. And let's get rid of that. All right. So, what's it going to take to do this? Well, it's going to take a lot of 3D printing. Thank God I have a secondary 3D printer sitting right there. Otherwise, this would be a lot harder to do. We need to print a new box. We need to print uh, the BL Touch holder. We've got to get a control box going because we're going to move the controls to the outside of the printer. There's going to, oh, and of course, some feet with some squash balls to lessen vibration. There's going to be a lot to this. Got a lot of printing to do. 
So uh, how about uh, we spend the next three days talking to one another as uh, we drag through all the... No, let's just do it like this. Okay, it's time to have a little fun. As you just saw, I spent a few moments printing out some letters out of ABS. So here they are. Let me zoom in and show them to you. There you go. They're little thin, tiny letters. And I need to glue them onto this board. And it feels a little like Sesame Street. These are ABS, so they're going to be very, very staticky. Uh, and in order to not touch the cyanoacrylate, I'm going to use this handy dandy pencil. So, there we go. And yes, it's my old bottle of CA glue. I'm just going to spot a little glue here. It doesn't really take a lot, and because of the lower resolution underneath this, this should actually take and stick very well. All right. And then we find the Harry Potter lightning bolt here. We match its orientation and glue it into place. So this is the poor man's two layer or two color 3D print. You can, uh, you can print your insets separately, then gently glue them into place, you just leave yourself a spot of the same height. There we go. Now if you're wondering what this is, this is the cover to this week's project. I am upgrading the CR10, I have a CR10S to be more like the CR20 Pro. I want a kind of a bigger version of the CR20. So what I've done is I've added direct drive, I'm going to add some leveling, auto leveling to the to the board, and I'm also going to move the control box. And that's what this is for. I'm going to move that control box from the side to underneath the printer, and I'm going to put the printer on some squash balls, which hopefully will quiet things down so that I can actually use the printer at the same time as making videos for everybody here. All right. We have the D, Danger Will Robinson, D. There we go. And again, just avoid touching the glue directly if at all possible. And just insert the letter using the eraser. Erasers don't tend to stick very hard to cyanoacrylate glues. So if you use you know, cyanoacrylate by the way, super glue, just good old fashioned super glue. So you just want to tack a corner down, or tack an area of it down, and then push down gently. Now, it's very important to get the letters the correct size for the indentation that you're filling in. So when I printed this, I printed it with a offset, uh, which I'll show you later in Kura, uh, of negative 0.1 millimeters. So everything got expanded out or shrunk down, I should say, by 0.1 millimeters. And what that allows is that when you print the standard letter, it'll just drop right into the hole like that. There you go. So now we have lightning bolt, d. I mean, yeah. So there we go. Let me push this all the way down into its hole. There we go. All right, now for each letter. And, uh, this is where I will probably speed up the video. All right, let's get a little glue in there. And this is my basic technique for inlay. You know, just get enough glue in the hole to do the job, and then inlay in the letter that you want. There you go, and it should just drop right into place. 
There we go. Now it's important to note that these letters are incredibly staticky, and st I mean when I say incredibly staticky, I mean super duper static electricity likes to hold these things into place. So, if at all possible, you really, really, really need to keep control of any static electricity in the area when you push the letters into their inlay spot. And there we go. And then they'll just glue into place. Now, you may be tempted to use something like a cyanoacrylate accelerator. Um, however, they do have a tendency to craze or whiten ABS plastic. So if you can avoid using an accelerator and you have the patience to just wait for the glue to dry a little, and as you put in each letter, you'll end up with a much nicer looking final product and you won't have to worry about it popping out. This particular glue requires about five seconds of pressure before it starts to harden. And uh, if you're in an area like right now, it's winter and there isn't a lot of uh, humidity in the air, it actually makes it a little harder to make this glue stick. <laughs> Up of that. So now that we finished this, I've got a piece of 1000 grit sandpaper. It's actually very, very smooth. And curving the paper so that I don't do the background, I'm going to gently sand the tops of the letters to remove any excess white that has been caused by the CA glue. You can see it actually is taking stuff off. You have to just be very gentle and you don't want to do this you know with too far or use too heavy a grit. I recommend you know 800 or a thousand grit sandpaper just to take the, the very top layer of the of any remaining you know cyanoacrylate or any white fuzz that might have formed. This will take it off. There we go. Now, you'll notice that there's a little mark here on the A, a little bit of plastic. I'm not gonna worry too much about that. It, um, it'll all come out in the wash, basically. There we go. So you just wanna give everything a, a little, just enough of a sand to make it smooth. And by using Thousand Grit, paper, you'll see it won't leave any marks. It will just even things out a little bit. And we're back. For the next step, we're going to apply just a quick clear coat over the 3D print. This will both uh, make the letters come out and pop, fills in any, any uh, remaining holes that are there, but it also just provides a better look, I think, for what's done. And this is a very, very thin, quick coat. Do not do this inside a non-ventilated space. This workshop is well ventilated. There's a big window and a quiet fan behind me pulling out the air. If you can, do this outside. However, when applying paints like this, 
Also make sure you're using them within their temperature range. Now, uh, I'm using unknown brand. Here we go. Ultra Cover Clear Gloss Paint. It says it seals, protects, and revitalizes. Also bonds to plastic, fast drying, non-yellowing, UV resistant. Well, okay. But the trick in using uh, products like this is to make sure that you lay down a very thin, even coat, and you only need to do it very lightly. You want to be about yay far. You know, it's you want to be about a foot or so from the object you're painting. And you want to start your spray before it goes in, continue past when you do it. So here it is, a quick rattle can method of finishing off a 3D print. So quick test here on the side. And yes, I get all my best drop cloths from Priority Mail from the USPS Post Office. And they're free and it's a nice source of cardboard and it's recy recyclable when you're done. All right, here we go. All right, so for next week, we've got a lot going on here. I've got to, uh, we need to take everything out of this old CR10 case here. Uh, we've got a lot to do to move the components over, take it all apart. Uh, so we're going to just take everything out of here, both the high and the low voltage components. We're going to move them to our new 3D printed low and high voltage cases. I've got a, oh, darn it, uh, I've got a, a Noctua fans here. They're much quieter. They're using gaming rigs. Should quiet the printer down quite a bit. Uh, also, if I can, uh, we are going to try to take this old filament sensor, uh, which I had on the old printer mounted at the top corner. We're going to try for a vertically mounted sensor here, uh, which I just printed out at the same time as the feet, those little squash ball feet down there. Uh, but even with a little custom lid. Uh, also, take a look at this. I mean, this is how our gloss finish came out on the 3D printer part. You can just look at the difference. It is shiny, so shiny. Uh, also, finishing off those letters made them, you know, look professional and nice. So I'm, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Happy enough that I think I'm going to reprint the uh, black one here and uh, replace it. We'll see. That'll be for the uh, next week. All right, so there's a lot to do, a lot of stuff to take apart on the old printer, a lot of stuff to get to more than in video. So we're going to take everything out of this box. I'm going to try to uh, remove all the components. We're going to get rid of everything that used to be in there. I'm going to put them into the new case. And it's essentially, you know, the, the core of the work to be done here. Uh, finally, uh, we're going to, you know, th there's one of the things and challenges of this printer is the SD card here. The SD card is going to be able to go in the side of the case with this little tiny reader. So we're going to try to replace it with a something that can read the large SD cards like I have in the old box. All right, that's it. See you guys in part two of this episode where we will begin the assembly of the printer. And remember, there are no failures, only happy accidents. See you next week. Yeah.